everyone and welcome to this Valkyrie sound tutorial. This is the third tutorial in a mini series looking at adaptive sound. We've already created our data engine and we've made an alien style motion tracker. In this video we're going to set up our systems to use that same engine to generate some homeworld style radio chatter. We'll focus on audio that's driven by player states, changing sounds as the player's situation changes. We aren't creating a system that triggers chatter when you give orders to the ship. That requires some additional steps, so keep that in mind as we go through. In this setup, only the player character is going to talk. So here we have our sound cue, player chatter. In this, we have a switch node connected to the output. And I've called the switch node chatter type. That's the int parameter name. We'll use an integer to drive the switch and select an appropriate sound based on the player state. Into the switch node, we have a variety of random nodes, and each one of those is connected to multiple waves. These all have equal weighting, so we have an equal chance of pulling any one of these waves when this particular integer is called. When you're setting up your switch in the sound queue, make a note of which integer matches up with which audio type. So here for zero, I have that link to my ambient chatter. Then enemy detected is linked to 1, combat losing to 2, and so on all the way down. I've put comment boxes around this as a handy reference, and it just makes it a little bit easier for the next steps we'll be doing in a moment. The waves are just a few lines that I jotted down and recorded. You can easily use your mobile phone to record the audio for yourself. I've applied a few effects in Cubase, mostly equalizer and compression effects, that limit the frequencies between 400 and around 8000 Hz. It's simple stuff that you can reproduce in free software like Audacity. After creating these assets, I exported them as mono waves and imported them into folders in Unreal Engine. Then you select them all and you just click and drag them into, if you can find it, drag that into the sound queue. With that selected, you right click and click on random and it automatically attaches all of the cues to your random node. What we're going to do in this tutorial is we're going to use an enum to control the player's state. An enum makes it a little bit easier for us to see what state we're attaching to the player as the game unfolds. So to create the enum, if you right click in the content browser, you go to blueprints and enumeration, and I've called mine player states. We've got nine sections here. We have ambient, Enemy detected, combat losing, combat winning, resource collector harvest, resources exhausted, fuel low, fuel critical, and an extra one here for scenery, box related to a wreck that's in the map. So to show you what that looks like when we call it, if you look at the character blueprint from event begin play, we're going to set the player chatter to the ambient state. Drop that parameter in, and then we can select from any of the nine states we have in the enum list. So the player character blueprint is basically lifted from Epic's top-down example map. This mesh, by the way, is a fan-made mesh. It's available on sketchfab.com from Mr. Hohenheim. It is, as you can see, quite a dense blueprint. There are a few things that we won't cover, things like the position of the mouse, which is part of the top-down blueprint anyway, zoom camera, and camera rotation. Obviously, I'm showing you on here anyway, so if you want, you can copy these but it's not something I'm going to be talking about in depth at all. So let's focus on one of the simpler sections first, the audio player states. First, we need to make sure that we have our sounds in the player character blueprint. So if we go back to our sound, hit the browse button that takes us to where we are, we are going to drag that one in to the player character and make sure it's in the upper left component section here. Obviously, I already have one in there, so I'm going to delete that. This is mine here. On the right-hand side, under the details, type in UT and make sure that Auto Activate is unticked. That's going to prevent the sound from playing as soon as the character spawns. Next, we're going to right-click and we're going to create a custom event. And I've named mine Load Sounds. We're then going to connect that to a branch and we'll drag in the SC Player Chatter Hook that up to an is playing node. We get that by oops. We get that by typing in is playing. 
and then we hook that up to the condition of the branch. From the true output, we're going to add a delay node with a duration of 0.01, and that's going to mean that we're constantly checking to see is the sound playing, and as soon as the sound isn't playing, then we can trigger another sound. Just avoids overlapping and cutting off a sound while it's still in play. From the false node, we're going to add a do once node. And then from that, we're going to add a set integer parameter node. Easiest way to get that is again just drag in the audio component, set integer parameter, and make sure the in name is set to chatter type. So that, remember, was the name we gave the switch earlier on, the int parameter name. They have to match exactly. For the in int, for the in int, what we're going to do is we'll create a map and we'll reference our player state enum. So to do that, for the player state enum, we add a new variable, call it what you like, and then in the variable type, we're going to type in player state, and that's going to get the enum that we created, whatever it was that you named it, click on that, and then we can just drag that in, and then you want to connect that to the find map node. Now the map is created by adding another variable of the same type, but this time we're going to change the, the little symbol here to the map one dictionary, and it should default to integer. If not, just change that second category to integer. And what this lets us do, if we compile that, we can then add an integer reference for each one of the enum sections that we've got in our list. The next step then is to make sure that that relates directly to what we've hooked up here. So on the very top one, for example, I have the ambient chatter that is at zero. So in my player character note in my player character blueprint, the map that I create has to have ambient at zero, so it calls the correct sound. If you get an error, if you get this error, you cannot add a new key to the map while a key with a default value exists. That means that we have to change this to something else, and then we have to put this entry in last. There doesn't seem to be a way around this, so when I'm using a map, I always start from the bottom up, so I start with my highest integer, and for this, my lowest item on the enum list. So once you've created that and you've populated the list with the correct integers, hook that up to the map input of the find node, and then make sure that's all connected up to the set integer parameter node. Next, we're going to add a delay. This duration is really just to add a little bit of space between the chatters, so they aren't going in a constant stream. So I've added a delay node, and then I've taken off from there just a random float in range. And I've set those values to 3 and 7. But experiment, play around. You can have them set to whatever you like. This does affect how quickly the sounds are queued. If a player state is changing rapidly, a longer range on this delay will mean that some sounds may be out of context by the time they do play, or they won't be called to play if the state changes again before a sound's been called. From there we add the play node and we need to make sure we hook up the player chatter to the target. And I've just realized that's the wrong way around. So what we're going to do is we're going to hook that up to the play instead. I'm going to take the output of the audio component node and set the delay after it. And then the completed node and then the completed pin of the delay node goes back to the reset. So that means then that we should get sounds that are more in fitting, more in keeping with the current player state. Apologies for that little error there. So next we're going to have a look at the combat section. So again, we're going to create a new custom event. And this time I've called mine combat. From there, we're going to add a branch node in. And remember when we made the list of actors line of sight radius in our first video? I'm going to pull that out as a get, and we're going to hook that up to a length node. We're then going to check if the length of that array is greater than zero. That goes into the condition of the branch. From the true of the branch, we're going to add a sequence. 
And for the top line, we're going to do these few steps. We're going to add a do once node. From the reset pin, we're going to add another custom event node. This one I've called reset combat chatter one. From the completed output, we're going to add the enum player state. So remember, drag that in as a set and hook that up. And this time we are going to select enemy detected. We're then going to add the delay that I mentioned earlier. So we got this removed by going in here by get sound blue hoop sound get duration hook that up to the delay node. Once completed, we're going to create a new value, which is called is enemy detected, simple boolean. We're going to take that and we'll come back to that node in a moment. From the second execution output of the sequence node, we're going to add a branch. I'm going to say is enemy detected. If not, we're not going to do anything. If the enemy is detected, we're basically just going to copy this section here and reproduce it down here, but we're going to change the lower value to one, hook that up to a new branch. If that's true, if the number of actors on the list is greater than one, then we're going to put in combat losing, basically that the player is outnumbered. If we had a full RTS system, a full strategy system, I'd probably be looking at the relative firepower between the player ship and the other craft as well. If the player is outnumbered, they may be outnumbered by weaker ships. So there's different things to consider. This is obviously just a, a very basic setup based on the, the number of AI enemies there are. From the false output of that pin, we're going to reproduce this. But again, we're going to change the lower value to zero. Then I'm counting the player as winning the combat. So we're going to set that one to combat winning. From the false output of that branch, we're going to squirrel along and add in a new branch virtually the same, except that we're going to change this to an equals. So just tap equals twice. And if it equals zero, if that's true, we're going to call the do once node. From the reset, again, we're going to add our own custom event. And I've named this one reset combat chatter two. So once you've created that, you want to add that onto the end here. So you have reset combat chatter two, and that's the end of the first line then. From the do once node, we're going to add another set player state. We're going to set it back to the ambient. We're going to unset is enemy detected, back to false. And we're going to reset combat chatter one. And finally, last step for this one is way back at the beginning when we created our very first branch, we're going to peel off from the false all the way along to the do once node here at the end. That means if we detect an enemy, but we don't end up triggering the winning or losing states, we can still reset the player state back to the ambient, and that prevents us from being stuck on the enemy detected state. So that's the audio player state done and the enemy detection done. Now to power this, as you'll see at the very top, we've got that event begin play, and that's gonna set our enum to the ambient, so that's important. Next, from the event tick, I've dragged off from here and I've gone to promote a variable, which I've called delta time. I've hooked up the execution pin to that as well. We'll need that later on. And then I've added a sequence node in here, just some debug sections, nothing crazy there. From the top output, I'm running all of the elements that I'm gonna use. So this means I don't have a full spaghetti noodly junction here. I can keep everything in order, all my functions across the top here, and you can see these are all custom nodes down the side here. So this very first one from our first video is the run clear line of sight that handles the detection of enemies near the player. This one here we'll cover later, that's about leveling the ship depending on the terrain that's below it. It doesn't particularly matter what order you have these in, so long as you do have them in, or it doesn't seem to matter. Here's the combat one. So we need to add in that combat custom event that we created. And we also want to add in the load sounds event as well. So now if we compile and save, if we go back into our world and then hit play. Ah, would you look at that? Atmosphere.
atmospheric composition unbreathable moving out i think we are repeating too often so i'm going to go and change this to five and nine Okay, so let's see how this works. Let's see if we can find an enemy ship. Hey, look at that. There's our wreck. We know the enemy's out there. Stay alert. There on the upper left, you can see enemy detected. Combat winning. Uh, I almost feel bad about this. Who? Taking damage. Combat losing. Combat winning. We're now back to ambient. So in this video, we change the audio depending on the player state. What we can look at is prioritizing sounds, so we've got a hierarchy that lets the player hear the most important messages while quashing other chatter. For example, being under attack is a higher priority message than detecting an enemy, and fuel low and fuel critical is a higher priority over anything else. We need that fuel to, to fight, to run, generally to carry out the player's instructions. So that's it for this video. Thanks very much for watching, take care, and as always, enjoy making your own projects.